And welcome back to Janky AF and Year of the Aerostar, Episode 7. Well, 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 a very special Aerostar today. Uh, here we have a 1986 Ford Aerostar minivan listed for just $800. And this one is uh, very distinctive for me because this is almost the exact Aerostar that I have. My, my 1986 Aerostar is brown in color, but it is the four-cylinder 2.3 liter fuel injected engine with a five-speed manual transmission. A super, super rare spec. Now the four-cylinder engine was only made for two years, 86 and 87. Um, not surprisingly, it was uh, vastly underpowered. I always joke that, you know, it makes around 100 horsepower, makes around 100 pound-feet of torque, and the claimed towing capacity of the Aerostar was 5,000 pounds. Now the truck itself weighs close to 4,000 pounds, depending on you know your uh, options and whatnot so with a you know as rear wheel drive not four wheel drive so with your rear wheels you are pulling between your towing uh thing and your vehicle itself close to nine thousand pounds with 100 horsepower and 100 pound feet of torque and this is the factory making this claim so completely hilarious um but neither here nor there. Um, the 2.3 liter was cool because it had this, and it has the badge on the back. It says electronic uh, fuel ignition or, uh, you know, fuel. Um, what's the word I'm looking for now? <laughs> uh, fuel injection. There we go. Um, so it does have fuel injection, unlike the 2.8 liter Cologne V6 that was carbureted from 86 to 87. And then after that, all Aerostars went to V6 models, either the 3.0 or the 3 or the 4.0, excuse me, and those were both uh, fuel injected. So um, I like it because when it came out, it was sort of ahead of its time. Again, it bragged about fuel injection. It was kind of funny. Um, and it was the smaller, probably more economical. Now, in theory, this thing gets around 30 miles to the gallon, which is excellent. However, um, Anytime hills are involved, it is a very steep, no pun intended, challenge for these Aerostars. And I think that bogs down their mileage quite a bit because you're like, you know, ramming it up there in second gear. But um, uh, just an incredibly rare spec. This reminds me of mine a lot. It has uh, similar wheels, not the identical wheels, but very similar sort of like truck like wheels. The center caps are very similar. I'll, I have to say these like almost like Corvette slicer wheels. These look perhaps aftermarket. Um, immediately you have your big towing. Uh, mirrors here just like mine um, and and one of the things I really like about the early Aerostars and I believe this was uh, after 87 or 88 that they changed this um, was the Aerostar badge used to go on the front quarter panel here and I thought that really looked cool it, I don't know it just kind of reminds me of a you know old Italian sports car or something it, it really for such a small thing to change and they moved it to like a, the back hatch I believe um, it, it really sort of I don't know, made a significant aesthetic change with that little thing by not seeing it there versus seeing it there. So that's absolutely beautiful. Um, now, as, as you can see, this Aerostar is clearly um, a little worse for wear. It looks like it's starting to grow some plant life on it, uh, becoming one with nature, but apparently it does run. Um, I love the description. Could be a great first year 2.3 liter five speed cruiser. And they even spell liter with the R before the E, just like I do in the British variety. Um, a cruiser. That is exactly what this is, is a cruiser. It's a little cruiser. Manual transmission, rear wheel drive. It's a little tiny underpowered sports car, um, just like any Fiat's or Alfa Romeo's or anything like that. Um, it has been sitting for quite a few years. You don't say. I couldn't tell by the uh, foliage that was growing on it and the moss. Um, it's like one of the trees in Lord of the Rings or something. Um, it ran flawless when it was parked. Maybe the oldest line of all time ran when parked. And, and they've upped the ante here because it didn't r r ran, didn't run when parked. It ran flawless when it was parked. <laughs> so what could go wrong? Um, if I clean it and fix the issues, the price will go up. I love this too. This is sort of a weird sort of bargaining chip. Like 
maybe you should clean it and fix it up and then raise the price. Uh, but um, I always wonder if it's been sitting five years and you're selling it suddenly now, like you're threatening that I might fix it up and charge more. It's like, well, um, so anyways, just a very funny uh, sort of trope of like the classifieds. It's gonna, it's, you know, I, you know, mileage will go up as I continue to drive it. It's a great thing. It's okay, this is a daily driver. Someone's driving this every day, it's reliable. Um, price will go up as I fix it is a little, little more, uh, you know, less confidence inspiring. I can start and run the motor so you can hear it. Now that is a great thing. Uh, you know, a running Aerostar for $800, no matter which one it is, uh, always a great deal. And the fact that this is the first year they made them a manual transmission with the four cylinder engine. I've actually never seen another besides the one I bought um, in this exact configuration. I believe I have seen 86s and I actually owned another 86, but it did have the V6 in it. Um, have a clean, clear title bring a trailer, uh, you know, the phrase that invented the website right there. And this is a perfect case of definitely uh, bring a trailer for this. But, you know, it seems like apparently you can drive it right up onto the trailer. So, you, you know, bring a trailer, but not a winch. Um, preferably cash, always cash is king. Um, so let's take a, a little look-see, shall we, through the uh, pictures here. There's, it's fun, funny, there's something just about, I, I kind of immediately saw this in the thumbnail. I, I figured it was an 86. Now it could be an 87, 88, but you, you have your Aerostar badge on the side there. You have your big truck towing mirror. You have these BC, beefy like truck-like wheels. Um, and so immediately to me, you know, the, uh, the astute Aerostar observer, anyone who knows what they're looking at is gonna immediately know, okay, this is something special. Um, obviously then we're clued in again. It looks like they have some cool cars here. It looks like maybe a Toyota MR2 here. Um, your your five bar grill as we say so this is your first generation grill where it was much more 80s and much less 90s and and i like both equally i think but um i actually i don't want to say i prefer the later one but for, you see so many aero stars and you get used to the later grill being sort of the one that's the one um so when you see a first generation grill it's always sort of a little treat and i and i will say just you know in terms of the design of the car it fits very very well with it it's a little bit more um, less flashy and showy, and that kind of goes with the Aerostar's, um, you know, sort of handsome. There go the dogs. Uh, handsome, basic demeanor. Um, so the Ford badge here is obviously missing, um, and just a ton of growth and foliage and uh, whatnot. You, know, you probably don't want to start your windshield wipers because they'll probably scratch the windshield. Um, amazing seats now mine does not mine actually has some like vinyl seats which is also very very weird but they definitely have all the aerostar patterns on them i believe they are factory but i've never seen like a sort of vinyl seats in this style whereas the vinyl seats were usually the bucket seats that were in more of the cargo aerostars but mine has like sort of the passenger seats but with a vinyl covering this has the passenger seats and also has the wonderful feature of this piping i've talked about it in some of my other uh, year of the Aerostar videos, but I haven't yet demonstrated it. And here is this beautiful two-tone seat. So you have these patterns, and some of them are less dramatic than this. This, you can clearly see that the pattern is different than the plain cloth. Some, they're very close in color, so you can't really tell. And then additionally, you have this beautiful red piping that separates them. And I thought that was just a really, really cool aesthetic design that Ford did. And I don't know that they did this on any other vehicle. I don't know that they did this on Tauruses or Explorers or, um, you know, other sort of iconic Ford. Ford in the late 80s and early 90s, you know, first with the Taurus and then with the Aerostar, they, they really came into their own. The Taurus was a huge selling car. It was a really big deal for Ford. They were competing with like Audi at the time and very successfully. Um, and the sort of simple angular styling was really sort of a revelation in the American car scene. And the Aerostar, I would say, is, is, the, is the one that gets credited less, but I think it really was, um, you know, a major player in the minivan scene, obviously, for 12 years and over 2 million of them made. So this, these seats are just beautiful and the big puffy armrest, you can't see it here, but I've talked about it before, the sort of integrated headrest and one little um, sort of wrap around bar there, just a beautiful, and it looks like there's even some, now maybe this is just stains, but it looks like there might even be some slight like blue and red coloration in these seats. Beautiful, beautiful seats in these vehicles and just another touch. Now you do have the blue interior here. The other 86 that I sold to my buddy Evan had the blue interior. And this is just like a classic, any American car, Cadillac, Buick, whatever. You basically, it was like you get a tan interior, you get a red interior, you get a blue interior. And I always bemoan the fact that there's not more green interiors and like other colors, but this, this, sort of like cobalt blue and then that dark maroon red and then there are aerostars of redded out interiors and those are amazing i would love to own one of those one days one day 
but the blue interior is very, very nice. And when they did something, they did it all the way. So every single piece was, um, you know, the co whatever color it was. Here we see the beautiful gauge cluster. And I talked about this in some of my videos. You can see, now if you watched my last video, you saw that I sort of talked about the updated gauge cluster. And that was probably the single biggest thing that happened in the Aerostar was when they updated the, updated these gauge clusters. First they went digital just for a couple years. And those are really cool, almost look like a C4 Corvette. Um, and then they went to an analog gauge, but it was much more updated and just looked sort of higher quality. My favorite thing about this first generation gauge cluster, aside from how basic it is i mean it's really really basic look like it could have came out of like the 60s or 70s um if not for the your sort of colors going on which kind of gives it away as the 80s actually the orange was like a very ferrari thing in the 80s and 90s the orange gauge clusters um, which people complain about but i actually think are beautiful and, and represent the time as well so there's no tachometer on these uh on these clusters you do have quite a few different gauges you have fuel volts oil and temperature um but you don't have a tachometer. But instead what they've done, and this is one of my favorite Aerostar things ever, is at 55 miles an hour, it turns yellow. And at 75 miles an hour, it turns orange or red. So at 55, it's not, it's like, you know, we don't care how many RPMs you're doing, but like, just be careful. You're going 55 miles an hour in an Aerostar. And at 75 miles an hour, it's like, warning <laughs> like watch out buddy <laughs> which is funny because of course the aerostar is like sort of modeled after the spaceship and you would think like you know 75 miles an hour is a um you know a paltry speed when you're you know talking about the aerodynamics and the spaceship like qualities of this vehicle but i can attest 75 miles an hour in a 1986 aerostar with a four-cylinder engine uh you know the sensation of speed is uh up there with any other you know slow car that you drive fast um, so just one of my favorite all-time things about the area star here you can see the blue steering column um, and then the blue everything else and again like the the first <clears throat> generation interior the second one it kind of swoops around and it's very angular and bubbly and nice this just has this big pod that kind of sticks out and even though this is factory it looks like an aftermarket system because the way they put this plastic insert in here that will hold your radio and your you know ac vents and all that the fit of it is so terrible <laughs> i mean people complain about teslas now but i've never seen one of these that even remotely fits into the cluster it was almost like an afterthought um which is so so funny to me and so you know just it, it all goes back to the fact that this was a utilitarian vehicle and if that's something that's going to bother you that this you know big chunk of plastic doesn't fit perfectly into another big chunk of plastic then you're missing the point entirely but it is funny to sort of know of course here your blue steering wheel very 80s almost looks like a you know it's a two stock obviously but it kind of resembles that citroen one stock steering wheel and of course you have your big pod that bubbles out here and then another pod that bubbles out here and all your switches are very nice like everything is right you know very driver oriented they say these days but you have your lights you have your wipers you have your fan speed you have your hot and cold which is of course a nice red and blue line that kind of gradually replace each other um and very kind of clunky and awkward but but very very functional i will say very utilitarian um and the very tiny skinny steering wheel i do not believe there's an airbag on this wheel it's too bad we can't see a better view of the uh, manual shifter but there it is down there hiding in the corner with the big giant shifter boot on there long school bus style throws which is very very fun it is a very very uh, fun car to drive and an excellent exhaust note particularly on the four cylinder i will say it's very underrated quality of it and the fact that it's blue on the outside blue on the inside blue on blue like just a great color specification um no you know pinstriping or any doodads of that nature obviously your bumpers are not body colored i think um painting aerostar bumpers body color is one of like a really cool modifications and that while it's not completely stock i think looks great particularly like the white cargo aerostars when they paint the bumpers on them i think it just takes it to a whole nother level so just a gorgeous the big giant towing mirrors which i mentioned before and this looks like a panel van now i am i am wondering if uh i wish we could see around to the back of this vehicle because maybe we can kind of discern from these interior shots obviously it's all stripped out so it looks like it might have been a, a cargo vehicle from the start i wish i could see if it had barn doors it looks like it may actually have barn doors so it's like kind of a cargo now mine has the lift gate mine was more of a passenger um but this looks like it was a factory cargo aerostar version 
which it kind of does make sense for the four cylinder and the manual transmission. You think that'd be more of a, of a cargo van rather than a passenger vehicle. So that kind of makes sense. Beautiful, looks like the interior color is maybe slightly different than the exterior, although it doesn't seem like it's been repainted. So you have your, uh, you know, proof that it's a 2.3 liter right there. Now this Lima engine was in a lot of things. I believe it was in Mustangs um, and all sorts of other vehicles. I'll have to do the history of the engine, but they made it for years and years and years in different uh, incarnations, probably going back to the 60s or 70s. Um, again, great picture of these seats with that red piping. So if you're a person and only 100,000 miles, it looks like um, you know, you're sitting right at 100,000 here. Um, Although maybe that's 110,000, I'm not sure. It's only a five-digit uh, odometer, so I guess we'll have to take their word for it. That's only rolled over once. Um, if you're thinking about getting into the Aerostar game, if you're thinking about getting one of these vehicles, this would be an absolute perfect one to get. It's funny because the Aerostar market really doesn't have a market, you know, where people are actually discerning different years and stuff yet. But you know, I also have a Fiat X19, and the earlier years, although they were had even less power than they did later. They had a 1300 cc instead of a 1500 cc engine. They made you know 10 less horsepower, um, and were generally not quite as well put together. I think the second generation interiors were a little nicer, and they had a four speed rather than a five speed transmission. And also the engine was an interference engine as opposed to the 1500, which was non interference. So if your um, timing belt breaks, then you're going to have all sorts of like stuff going on with your valves and whatnot. So I think the second generation or, you know, updated, let's say Fiat X19 um, was, was sort of vastly better in a lot of different ways. But despite that, the earlier cars, specifically 1974, um, go for, you know, in some cases almost twice the money as the later ones. Now, a lot of people don't like the US spec bumpers that are on them, and that's the reason why. Um, but I can also see the appeal of the original ones and where I want to connect that and analogy to. And I think Aerostars and X19s are also very similar. They're a wedge shape. Um, there was only one body style ever, and that was the complete car. It was one singular thing, which I really, really love. Um, Ran also had really good runs. I think the X19 even had a longer run than the Aerostar. Um, but I find myself gravitating towards all Aero Stars, but the earlier ones too. So in that in that sort of analogy, I get it why people like the earlier ones, even though they're potentially not as nice or as um, you know reliable or well built. Um, there's certain little aesthetic cues about the earlier ones which I really really like, and I also just generally like things that are sort of at the earlier stage of their run, even though they I always say, oh, it's a 1986, the first year they made it before they worked out all the kinks, and I like that. I like something that's just the original original um, incarnation of something, you know, exactly how they designed it and released it. And then updates are made, you know, changes are made, little aesthetic things are tweaked, but I, I kind of like the, or, the original version of it. So while I love all Aerostars, um, there's something to be said for, you know, the first year of production in 1986 is that. So if you're looking to get into an Aerostar, this would be a perfect, because you're getting in real cheap, 800 bucks, You'll probably even talk them down at six or seven hundred dollars it runs so that's great um, you put this thing on a trailer and just like clean it off give it a detail and um, put a new fuel pump in there and i guess it needs a ignition key switch um, and you know you probably got a, a driving car and then you know you slowly build up the other things they'll probably need brakes at some point um, but these four cylinder engines are, are are pretty robust as far as I know. And it's fuel injected, so you're not dealing with tuning a carburetor and some of those things like that. Um, so just a wonderful, wonderful Aerostar. Boy, if this was this is in uh, Newman Lake, Washington, which I forgot to mention before, um, if I wasn't so far away, then I would definitely probably be calling this seller. And uh, if I could have two 86 four cylinder Aerostars, that would be absolutely incredible. But uh, I'll leave it for someone else to go out and get. Um, and I hope someone does. You know, this car is really, really worth saving, especially at this price. And it doesn't look like as much rust on it at all. Now, if you clean this up um, with a relatively low mileage and did some mechanical work to it, it probably needs a little bit of paint work. But I even think this wouldn't be a terrible investment project because Aerostars are finally starting to catch on. I think there's one going for 15 grand now, um, which also I believe is is a at least within the first three years, 86, 87, or 88. Um, and I'll try to get that featured on here. It was, I saw it for sale for like $6,000. And of course it was in Michigan. Of course I didn't have the money to buy it. 
um, nor the time nor the resources. And then I saw it maybe two weeks later on Facebook Marketplace going for like twelve or fourteen thousand dollars. So someone's trying to double their money on an Aerostar. And and part of me hates it, and part of me is like, well, you know, it's good that the values are going up. More of them will get saved and preserved. Just a quick last little thing on these Aerostars that are a singular color. You kind of um, it's almost more noticeable because they're not painted, but look at this little stripe here. So it's, you got this little curved line going up on the fender running all the way down the vehicle. And then you have this straight line that kind of just barely bezels out like the, the, the sheet stamping and pressing on these. Although it's a very simple design, there's actually quite a few lines going on. You have one down at the sill, you have one down at the bottom of the door there, you have another one under the badge, and then you have a fourth one, not to mention your, um, you know, your hood crease here so you have you know and then you have all these panels going on there's just like a lot of like very neat little stampings that go on that despite it being a very simple design give it this sort of depth and um, give it this sort of um, infinite uh, study ability you know Jalen always says this is the kind of car you can sit in garage with a glass of wine and just stare at for hours and I, I feel that way about the Aerostar I think it is just like a fantastic looking vehicle um, and certainly one for the ages so there you have it, a beautiful, stunning 1986 Ford Aerostar in Newman Lake, Washington for $800 with a four-cylinder four 2.3-liter engine and a five-speed manual transmission. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this has been Year of the Aerostar, and until next time, janky do thank you.